Here's what we'll be covering in this lesson. Why this is the perfect business model. How this business actually works. Why we're starting off with Amazon. So why is this the perfect business? Well, first, because it can be started from almost any country in the world. And it can be operated from anywhere in the world. It's a real business that focuses on time-proven business principles and strategies. It requires little to no technical experience. It provides great cash flow while at the same time building a business asset that can eventually be sold for huge profits. And it's perfectly situated to benefit from existing business trends, such as the growth of Amazon, e-commerce, and fulfillment. So here's how this business works. There's you, your supplier, the customer, and at the center of it all, Amazon. You take care of the product selection and building out the brand. Your supplier takes care of manufacturing and shipping the products to Amazon. The customer, of course, takes care of ordering. And Amazon takes care of everything else, such as storing your products, collecting the payments from customers, shipping and handling returns, handling customer service, sending payments to you, and also some marketing through paid advertising, retargeting, and search engine optimization. And even though Amazon did $177 billion in 2017, e-commerce sales make up about $3.5 trillion each year. That means that Amazon accounts are less than 5% of the overall market, and they still have a lot of room to grow. They also have the largest fulfillment network in the world, with over 200 fulfillment centers worldwide and growing. But are we just building an Amazon business? Absolutely not. We're only starting out on Amazon because it's the easiest place to start a business and scale it up rapidly. What we're really building is a brand that is so much more powerful than just the product you're selling. Your brand will become a valuable asset that produces revenue, profits, and the ability for a huge cash windfall should you ever decide to sell it. Turning your business into an asset is a factor of three things. Time, money, and execution. Those three things together they'll help determine how valuable your business asset will become. And if you're lacking in one area, you can compensate through other areas. Let's look at a hypothetical example. If you're able to put in 180 hours of work, invest $5,000 in capital, and execute at a high level, you could potentially create a business that's making $20,000 a month in profit. And using a fairly standard multiplier of three and a half times your yearly profit, that will result in an asset that could potentially be sold for $840,000. Now, how can you compensate if you're lacking one of those areas? Well, if you have less money, then you can compensate and still achieve the same results by working more hours or executing better and more efficiently. And if you didn't have much time to put into it, you could compensate by spending more money, such as getting more inventory or outsourcing some steps or executing more efficiently. This means that there's no excuse at all for not being able to succeed. Now here's a sample business timeline for a typical Amazon physical products business just starting off. This of course will vary greatly and really depends a lot on when you get your first product in inventory. But in month one, the goal is to order the inventory and then hopefully in month two, your inventory arrives and you're able to launch your product. In month three, your sales should start kicking in using the various marketing and launch methods we'll be teaching you. And then in month four, based upon how well your sales are going and doing some projections into the future, that's when you should be reordering your inventory. Then in month five, your new inventory arrives. And then in month six, you really start scaling. Now, this entire process can be repeated for your first product until you're able to scale it up to where you want to go, or it can be repeated for any additional products that you launch. Now, let's go over the three different business objectives you can have for your new business. There's cash flow, cash out, or a combination of the two. And the goals will be different for each one of these. The goal of a cash flow business is to build a cash machine that you can live off of very comfortably for the rest of your life. For cash out, the goal is to build a highly valued business that you can sell and then make a cash windfall off of. And of course, combination is to build a cash machine, but one with potential to sell should you choose to do so. Now, all three of these have one thing in common in order to build a business. They all involve ramping up your sales at the beginning in order to increase how quickly you can build profits and to grow the business. After that, though, things vary slightly. For a cash flow business, you want to focus on a good profit margin because your profit margin is basically the salary that you'll be making a living off of. In order to do that, you will need to reinvest part or as much of your profit as you possibly can. Also, you will be able to take some profits out, 
But the goal here is to keep ramping up your profits to grow your income. Now for a cash out business, your initial goal after ramping up sales will be to quickly grow your product catalog because that is the easiest and fastest way to grow the value of your company. In order to do that, you'll want to reinvest all of your profits. And then your initial focus will be on sales volume and not so much on profits, but eventually you will need to focus on profits because no one wants to buy a company that is not profitable. And of course, for a combination, um, it's really just basically a blending of these two. You'll want to slowly grow your product catalog. You'll want to reinvest most, but not all of the profits. And then the goal here is to grow both sales and profits to give you the most flexibility. Now, in order to achieve success for your business, you need to set goals. And one of those goals should be your financial goal. But what's realistic? How do you know what to set for a financial goal? Well, let's start by looking at some real examples. One member started out the business, and a year and a half later, they sold it for $2 million. Another member started the business, and then within nine months, they produced $1 million in sales. Another member started out the business and was able to replace their six-figure income and then quit their job within 12 months. And yet another member started their business, and three years later, they have a business generating $12 million a year in sales. Now, these don't really help because it's so hard to determine from these and other people's experiences what's realistic for you. In order to do that, we need to look at what you want to get out of this business. But before we can determine what your financial goal is, we have to first figure out what your real goal is for building this business. Do you want to replace income from a job that you have right now? So you can quit that job. Maybe you're miserable in that job. You just want to quit it as quickly as possible. Or you're looking to build up a big business so that you can have a huge cash windfall when you finally sell it. Or maybe you want to build a business that's a true asset that can pass down to your children. And if any of your goals involve having more free time, what is it you want to do with your free time? Will you still need to have a lot of money so you can travel in style and luxury? Or are you just looking to spend some more free time with the family? So here's what I want you to do right now. Pause the video and then write down what your real goal is without any dollars attached to it. Here's a few examples. My goal is to be able to quit my job within 12 months and still have plenty of money to travel. All right, now, before we can come up with that financial goal is, we also have to know how to calculate profits. And net profits are basically total revenue minus the cost of goods sold minus any other business expenses. Now, I'll go over what those mean. Total revenue is what Amazon pays you after they take out all of their fees. The cost of goods sold is an accounting and manufacturing term, and that's basically your product costs, so what you pay the manufacturer, plus any shipping costs. And the shipping costs include all importing costs, the shipping part of that, plus customs, duties, and taxes, and then also shipping the product to Amazon. And any other business expenses might be any type of advertising you do, uh, hosting a website, or maybe if you pay for a uh, email service. Now, a good profit should be anywhere between 25 and 40% for this business. As an example, if we're able to generate $100,000 a month in sales, that would result in $25,000 to $40,000 a month in profit. So now that we know what your real goal is, and we know how to calculate profit, it's time to choose your personal financial goal. And since profit is important regardless of your business objective, whether you're creating a cash flow business to live off of, whether you're creating a business that you can sell and cash out on or a combination of both, you still need to make a profit. So that is the best calculation to use when determining your financial goal. So let's set a profit goal for your business right now. I want you to pause the video after these instructions. Choose a monthly profit goal, choose a time frame to achieve it, and then write it down like this. My business will be producing a profit of so many dollars per month by this date. I want you to do that and then come back to this lesson. Now, no matter what date you just wrote down, whether it's three months, six months, or a year from now, everyone would like to succeed sooner. So let's talk about a few ways to help make that happen. The first way, of course, is to simply order more inventory initially. That way you'll never run out and you'll also have more inventory to work with when trying to ramp up your sales. Now, this is a risk, but it should be a calculated risk as long as you follow our guidance and training when doing your product selection. Another thing to do is to choose a product that's lighter and smaller. Therefore, it can be shipped by air. That'll get your product to you much quicker and you'll be able to start selling sooner. You can also choose a product that can be sourced right from inside your own country. Again, it should arrive to you quicker and then the shipping cost should be less as well. However, this does greatly limit your options as far as which products you can choose from. And lastly, you could choose a product that has a higher profit margin. And typically, products are at the very high end of the bands that we're going to teach you, offer a much higher dollar profit margin, and therefore can get you succeeding much sooner. However, those products will cost more money for your initial inventory purchase. Now, speaking of inventory, inventory is the number one way that you can succeed sooner. So let's talk a little bit more about that. 
One thing to keep in mind is that inventory is not an expense, so don't think of it that way. Inventory is actually an asset for your business. And every time that you're buying inventory, you're actually investing money into your business that you can get back out of your business as you sell your products. Now, almost everyone runs out of inventory initially. This is totally okay. If it happens to you, don't worry about it. It's actually a sign that you have a good product. However, every day that you're out of stock is a day of lost sales. So anything we can do, and typically that's by simply having more inventory, anything we can do to keep that from happening means the faster that you will succeed. Now, other than inventory, there are other ways to succeed faster as well. One is to spend more money on marketing and advertising. Some call this buying your way to the top of Amazon search rankings. Uh, another way is to price your product initially much more competitively than you want to, so you focus more on sales and not so much on profit. You could also pay for professional product images and videos, and that way that would increase the conversion rates of your product detail page. Or you could spend more money branding and packaging your product better than anyone else out there. Each of these will help you succeed much faster than you normally would, uh, but there is a cost for each one of them as well. Earlier in this lesson, we talked about how the amount of time and the level of effort you have to put in this business will affect how quickly you're able to succeed. So now let's talk about how your financial investment will do the same. Let's imagine we have three groups. One will be the slow and steady, then the fast starters, and then the rapid ramp ups. And the main difference will be what they can invest in this business initially. So let's say that the first group can invest anywhere from $500 up to $3,500 then 3,500 up to 10,000, and then for the rapid ramp ups, it's really 10, 20,000 or beyond. Now here's what it looks like. So for the slow and steady, they'll still be able to get a few samples, plenty for what they need to do. They'll be able to get the minimum inventory they need in order to launch their product and have a basic product launch. They'll have some basic branding, they'll have simple yet effective packaging, and they'll still have a very good social media presence because that doesn't take any amount of money at all. Now for the fast starters, they'll of course be able to get more samples. They'll have ample inventory to do a full good product launch. They'll have professional looking branding, they'll have professional looking packaging, and then they should be able to come up with a brand website in addition to their social media website. And of course, for the rapid ramp ups, they'll have lots of samples, lots of inventory, be able to do a big product launch or multiple product launches, professional branding and packaging, and they'll be able to even maybe partner up with some social media pros to really boost their product's launch. Now, no matter what group you fall into, do not fall into this trap. Your success is not dependent solely upon your financial investment. As a matter of fact, the most successful people we have seen started out in the slow and steady group. It doesn't do any good to be envious of someone because they have more to put into this financially. Instead, your sole focus should be on achieving your own personal goal, which is completely independent upon everyone else. So how much are you willing to invest in your business? Well, remember, we've had people invest as little as $500 and have still built very successful businesses. Your investment does matter, but it is only one factor in your success. And while risk equals reward, it's important to take calculated risks, not reckless ones. You should only do what you're capable of and what you're comfortable with in order to meet your own goals. So let's do this right now. Write down how much you're willing to invest to build your business. So now that we talked about your financial investment, let's go back and talk even more in depth about your time investment. Because time is an investment and will greatly affect how quickly you succeed. You see, at first, you will have lots of downtime. You'll be waiting for samples to arrive. You'll be waiting for your inventory arrive. You might be waiting for Amazon to check your product in and make it live on their site. But once your business takes off, trust me, you will never have nothing to do. There's all kinds of things you can do when you have the time to do them. They'll be researching additional products, creating content for all types of things like social media sites, emails, your website, launching additional marketing strategies, Analyzing your data, which can take a lot of time, such as your advertising return on the investment, the conversion rates of your pages, and then all kinds of product listing testing and improvements to it. Now, how much time you have to invest is completely up to you. There is no right or wrong answer. It's partially dependent upon your goal and how quickly you want to succeed, and also upon what you have to offer. We're going to go through the entire Amazon FBA life cycle, and this um, PDF will be available down below this video for you guys to download um, so you can have it, you can look through it as many times as you want. You can watch this video, the rest of the course, as many times as you want. Um, and so we're going to actually go through this um, step by step together on this video and you're going to have access to this PDF forever so you can kind of make sure that you're following um, the sequence and the steps so that you don't feel overwhelmed. Right, because preventing yourself feeling overwhelmed is one of the most important parts as an entrepreneur because it's so easy to just feel overwhelmed and give up, right? It's much harder to actually fight through that, and when you feel overwhelmed, 
go take a break, right? Go take a walk, go to the gym, um, go play some video games, do some yoga, whatever calms you down. Because as an entrepreneur, it can be hard, right? That's why 99% of people are employees. That's why 99% of people work for someone else their whole life, right? Making someone else rich. And that's why only the 1% of us, right? Which is you watching this right now are willing to do what it takes to be successful. So don't be 99% of the 99% of people that make someone else rich their whole life. You have to be the 1%, and to be the 1%, you have to be willing to fight through, you know, feeling overwhelmed. And I'm going to give you every resource, and I'm going to give you every possible unfair advantage to be able to fight through that and be a successful entrepreneur. So, part one, where we start, right? The whole, the beginning of the whole process is product research. Doing product research, finding a product that has, you know, good revenue that has between seven and thirty thousand dollars a month revenue. Um, generally, is a good range. If it's if it's slightly outside that, that's okay, right? But remember, refer back to the five steps of product research uh, in this module and make sure you follow along. And then you can always message me on my Facebook page um, just to get the final green light. Um, by providing me those five screenshots, which are the five steps of product research, just to make sure that you have found a good product um, that is going to be worthwhile for you to actually invest in. So product research is part one. You want to find something with you know, relatively high revenues, rel rel relatively low um, amounts of actual reviews, so there's not too much competition. You want to find something that does that is not trademarked, something that has a, you know, a relatively high number of monthly searches um, and something that you've actually verified um, is getting sales using the iTrack 999 card trick method. Um, and you remember, you can rewatch all of module one. If any of that didn't make sense, as many times as you want, there's no, there's never any reason to feel overwhelmed because I got your back. So after you do product research, the next part is you identify manufacturers um, and we go over that in module two, how to find the best manufacturers in the world, and then how to get the highest quality with the lowest possible cost. Um, we go over a lot of different strategies to really you know, leverage uh, multiple manufacturers against each other so that you get the best possible value. Um, once you identify your manufacturer, you want to get a shipping quote from your freight forwarder, right? And again, in module two, we introduce the best freight forwarders, the cheapest freight forwarders in the world. They're going to take care of your products and actually make sure that they get from your manufacturer into an FBA warehouse safely. Um, then you want to have your packaging and logo created. Again, we go over exactly how to do that um, in the course. Once you have your packaging and logo created, you want to order a sample of your product from the manufacturer that you end up choosing. Right? And uh, you want to make sure that the sample that you order is a completed sample. Right? The, you know, the, the manufacturer makes the product itself. They also make the packaging with your logo on it. So it really does look how a final product would look. And a lot of people make this mistake where um, they order just a sample of the product instead of a final sample. And you want to make sure everything is perfect, that the packaging looks good, um, that you know they include your um, all the things that they should include on the packaging, uh, that the product looks good, that it's high quality. Um, and then once you have that product sent to you, that sample sent to you, then you can do product photography, right? You can either send it to yourself or you can send it to a product photographer. If you want to take those images yourself, uh, you can. I definitely recommend using a professional service, which we talk about later on in the course. Again, every step of this entire process, we go through in detail. I just wanted to kind of give you a summary uh, up front so you understand that it's actually not that hard, it's not that overwhelming, and it's, it's very, very feasible to do, which is why so many of our students have had so much success doing this. Um, then you want to create an optimized product listing. So a product listing is nothing more than what you see on Amazon every single day, right? Nothing crazy at all. Um, <clears throat> so once you actually order your sample, get, you know, get the product photography and create the optimized listing, what you're going to do is you are going to place an order, right? Once you get the sample, if the quality looks good, the packaging looks good, everything looks good, then it's time to actually place an order with your manufacturer. And when you first do that, you pay a 30% down payment. So let's say that you know you want to order a thousand units. The, the total cost is a thousand dollars, just for you know math being easy. Then you would pay 30% of a thousand dollars, right? The the total amount you'd pay is a thousand, but for the first the, for the down payment, 
you would only pay $300 or 30% of 1000 that gets manufacturing started that gets the whole process started right um, and it's basically you giving a, a good faith to your manufacturer saying okay I'm gonna give you 30% you make it all and then once it's done and once I've inspected it and once it's all good then I'll give you the final 70% so when you place your 30 <laughs> excuse me your 30% down payment you want to make sure that you do that on PayPal. Um, you want to use goods and services, and you want to populate that payment with a credit card. And we're, again, remember, we're going to go through all of this in detail in the later modules. Don't worry at all. Um, we're going to go through everything step by step. I just wanted to give you a holistic look. Um, and then once you get the 30% down payment, they make all the units, and then when the manufacturing is completed, you get an inspection service, right? You can get inspection services for $99, super cheap. A third-party company comes in, in China, looks at all of the units, makes sure that they're all completely good, that the quality is high, that everything looks perfect, and then once that final inspection passes, then you pay the manufacturer the final 70%, and everything is good to go right <clears throat> once you pay that 70 percent you tell your freight forwarder which is the company that handles all the shipping that everything's good the freight forwarder picks it up from the manufacturer in china and they actually ship it over um, to the prep center in the in the usa one thing that's that's important to understand which we're going to explain more in in module two is what's called fob fob right or fob shipping basically means um freight on board if, if your manufacturer themselves are going to ship the products from the floor of the manufacturer once they're completed to the port in China, then the manufacturer is going to charge you a fee to do that, right? Because they're handling that, that element of the shipping. Um, if you want to just make it super easy, just tell the manufacturer, no, once the products are complete, my freight forwarder will pick them up from the, fa from the factory and then take them all the way to the um, FBA warehouse in the United States. If, you, if you'd rather get a freight on board quote, which means that the manufacturer is going to ship them from the manufacturer to the port in China, and then your freight forward is going to take over, then you would pay the manufacturer a very small fee to, to handle that small amount of shipping from the um, factory in China to the port in China. Right, but again, to simplify things, once your products are actually completed, then you say, hey freight forwarder, my products are done, they're at this factory, and they need to go to this warehouse, handle it right <laughs> shipping is something that i never want to deal with so that's why i found the best freight forwarders in the world that's why i share them with you and that's why they can handle all of this for the best prices in the entire world um so once you inform the freight forwarder of the completed order the product is sent to the fba prep center and then you know there's things like uh ppc and product giveaways but those are good things right that means that your product is actually selling that means that everything is going good that means you're getting your product from obscurity to page one um you know using services like songbase using services like page oneify um you know all of which we talk about in the course and now congratulations you are officially an Amazon seller making sales. So, yay, <laughs> again, I wanted to make this for you guys to make it super simple. Product research, find a manufacturer, um, get a quote from the freight forwarder to ship your products uh, from you know, your manufacturer to the USA. You have your packaging, your logo created. Um, you order a sample to make sure everything looks good. Um, once you have that sample, you have a product photographer take beautiful pictures of it. You create an optimized listing. Um, once you know you get your sample, everything's good. Then you place an order with your manufacturer. You pay 30% down payment to get everything started. Once your manufacturer is done manufacturing everything, then you get an, ins an inspection to make sure everything, all the units look good. You pay the final 70%. Once everything's done, you've paid, your freight forwarder picks it up from your manufacturer in China, gets it to the FBA warehouse in the United States, and then you are now officially an Amazon seller, ready to start making sales. If you want to learn more, I do have a completely free course, and there will be a link down underneath this description, guys, completely for free, 100%. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one, and let's get to the next.